Right now we're uh, two days approximately, two to three days. We're still in the month of Kislev. And that's wonderful because it's the month of when Hanukkah starts of the light. And the light goes into uh, Tevet, which starts on the 13th, I think, 12th, 13th. And that becomes the darkness. And it just happens to be that our December is the darkest time of our physical normal time period of, of dark around us. As I prophesy, in the next 28 days, those who are in the place of... Did I talk about mediocrity? If you're in a place of mediocrity in your... In your, in your whoever you are, you are going to be so shaken like the songs that Bruce and Cheryl said, the shaking of the Lord. And in the shaking of the Lord, you are either going to run to, Mount, to the top of to Mount Sinai, where Moses came down with, after 40 days, and says, I have brought you the word of the Lord. And what were they doing? They were taking the spoils of Egypt, and because they, Moses wasn't there, they ran to mediocrity, they ran into a place where their flesh was and they had to make the golden calf of idolatry. And that is going to happen to you in this next 28 days of darkness. Are you going to run to the idolatry of the golden calf or are you going to run to the mountain? Where are you sitting? If you are sitting in mediocrity, you are nothing more than the five virgins that, that burnt up their oil. And when it came time to that they needed to come into that place because the bridegroom was coming, they didn't have anything. What about the other five that were in the place of majesty and worshiping and preparing, totally awake and waiting for the bridegroom? That is where we need to be vigilant, vigilant body of Christ. Now, I'm not saying God is coming. Now, but I, will you look at the scriptures? I'm just saying, there is going to be a test upon the whole world in the next 28 days as we go into January. The wars and rumors of wars, there may be two other war fronts that the U.S. may have to look at, and they can't handle another one, much less two. They're already tapped out. It's like the wolves are sal they're salvinating. Russians, the wolves are salvinating. The Chinese bear is sal they know that US can't do any more. The Ukraine the the war the the war that's happening in the Middle East. There right now there's a war that's happening between Venezuela and a little country that they're going in to take the they take the oil, as I speak, and they haven't hit the nose yet. They want the oil. They found all kinds of oil off the shore of this little island that can't defend itself. Between Cuba and Venezuela, what is the U.S. going to do? Hong Kong has an election coming up in January, and... Right now, it's at the place of almost war there, if the, depending on the election in January, where there's going to be a confrontation between Hong Kong and China. Rumors of wars and wars. Why am I saying these things? This is a dark time. So we, in this darkest of time of Tibet, the light of Hanukkah, okay, Jesus is the light, are you going to run to the light or are you going to run to your flesh? As I'm prophesying right now, you need to make a choice. You cannot sit on the fence during these next 28, well, almost 30 days of, of Tibet. Going into the month of Adar. You say, Ray, you're preaching, prof prophesying too hard. Yeah, well... Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Mosete, Kuruba Baba Sete. Yana Mosari Hakuru Mosate. Yaraya Sokuru Yamana Sete. Shalom Bariakose. 
Father, there are, wherever those ones are that are lost and confused and kind of got stepped into the muck and the mire, God, that, that have not had the clarity of the vision to see or to understand. Lord, your heart of love and compassion overshadows any human's dilemma. So, Father, I just thank you by the power of Holy Spirit, Lord, that you will go and you will touch hearts and minds, Lord, that there would be an awakening and a light that would go on. The lights would start to flicker. God, where people do not yet know you, Father, that they, Lord, you show yourself to those places where there's, they, they're not even speaking whatever the language, but you show yourself and make yourself real. So in the name of Jesus, I say, Lord, make yourself real to those ones who have stepped into the muddied waters, that they could see where they've got, taken a wrong path. But Lord, I just thank you that you steer them now on a right path. Bring them, bring them back on the path of light and love and life. So Lord, the rivers of living water, we just say let, let those rivers of living water completely cover and flood them so that they can take that big breath and survive. So Lord, I just thank you because you're such a great God and you're such a loving God. And Lord, you're in, in Revelation 19.11, you are faithful. Your name is faithful and true. Amen. And we say that you are faithful and you are true to who you are as the almighty God and to the word. And Lord, you do not wish that anyone would perish, but that all would have everlasting life. So we call forward mm. anyone who's perishing and, and drowning, we pull them forth that they would have everlasting life in Jesus. And we bless your people, Father. We thank you for them. Lord, we thank you for the goodness and the mercy. That's who you are. That's who you are. And there is hope. There is hope, always hope in you. And faith, hope, and love, these three. But God, the greatest is love. So, Lord, I, I just speak a great outpouring of your love over hearts and minds and over those who have been have just been downtrodden. So, Lord, we just say, let love now prevail. You are love. So, Lord, we just extend your love. And, and that we would be sensitive, Lord, when you prompt us, Holy Spirit, that we would be sensitive enough to hear what the Spirit is saying, to, to stop and pray for this one or that one, when you prompt us, Lord. And that we'd be obedient to follow what you're saying, and not the voice of the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.